Hello, citizens, heroes, and villains out there, and welcome to Sean Humberg's Creative Corner. I am Sean Humberg, and today we're going to be working on a project that I've never done before, but I've wanted to do for some time. We're going to be doing a wax melting on canvas. So, I'm going to be showing you the steps that I took to complete this project, and you can follow along. I'm also showing you how this can be done with very minimal cost. Uh, everything that I use came from the Dollar Tree, aside from a heat gun, but you can use a hair dryer, and I'm going to show you just how to do that. So, enjoy, follow along, like and subscribe to this video, and make sure to leave in the comments below what you'd like to see for future videos and what you'd like me to show you how to make. So, here we go. All right, so let's get started. One of the best things about a project like this is that it doesn't really require a whole lot of money or special uh, materials or machines or anything like that. The crayons that you'll see me using sitting right there on the table are from the Dollar Tree. So the first thing I did was take a paper plate and draw a very basic circle. I decided what I wanted to go ahead and do was a pentagram. I've always loved pentagrams. I'm not a religious person, but I love the, the basis and the idea behind it. Uh, the idea of perfect balance in the universe. So that's what I wanted to do with this. I wanted to, to sort of represent the different elements of the pentagram being earth, fire, wind, soul, and do that as one of these sort of crayon melting parts. So I wanted to bring some stylization to it rather than just a basic melting. So I tried a few different styles, tried to do freehand to get the star just right, that didn't quite work, and then I tried arranging the popsicle sticks into a star, and then eventually ended on just making a pentagon and then drawing the points of the pentagon. This worked out pretty well. So, laid on the electrical tape, and the next thing is to trim off the edges to make the star work out. So here you see me actually trimming the edges, and I'm doing this on a canvas, so I did use a razor blade, but I needed to use very light touch. So I basically just moved the razor blade until it stopped feeling like the smooth electrical tape, and I started feeling the ridges of the canvas underneath. Um, so I used a very light pressure to do that. So moving on, you'll see the completed pentagram. Uh, I started taking out pieces to make it look like it was interweaved within each other. And you can look at pretty much any reference pentagram to make that happen. And I just freehanded the spacing to try and keep it as uniform as I could. Now this part actually putting on the circle can be a little complicated, but it, it's, it's definitely something that you want to learn if you want to start masking things off or anything like that for future projects. So what you'll see is that I'm stretching the tape across and I'm just barely pressing it on while moving along the circle and that allows it to have the flow. Now I'm going in with a popsicle stick and pressing in the divots from the inside in order to smooth it out all the way across. A good part about working with electrical tape is that it is extremely malleable so it's pretty easy to go along those curves and things like that. You can also get crafting tape to do the same thing and it actually works a lot better but I'm trying to show you you can do this without spending a ton of money. So I've used a, a cheap paper plate, $1 crayons, just one set of $1 crayons from Dollar Tree, and popsicle sticks you can get from the Dollar Tree, and I'm not really using those a lot in the actual project. So now it's time for me to take my box of crayons, which I got uh, for a dollar, and start sorting out the colors, how I want them arranged, and get all the paper and everything off of it. So I did that, instead of trying to peel each individual piece off, I took my razor blade and sliced down the edge after doing the first one and realized how long that would take. So I sliced down the edge and then and peeled it off pretty easily and went along Roy G. Biv. If you've never heard in the art uh, community, Roy G. Biv is a good way to remember how the colors should be arranged. It's an acronym for red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. So I arranged them in the rainbow pattern following Roy G. Biv, just trying to uh, get as close as I could to putting them in the border. And I started placing them around the edge of the star and then realized that it wasn't going to be enough crayons uh, to cover the whole edge of the star, so I decided to push them further towards the center. And then I decided this whole whirlpool effect might be a really cool look when everything was said and done. And I just used the electrical tape to make a really good edging around it. So now it's time to come in with the heat gun. You don't have to use a heat gun. Uh, you can use just a hair dryer, but you would have to do it for a longer period of time. 
and you would have to hold it further away because it would be blowing so hard it might blow your crayons all over the place but with patience you can do this with as simple as a hair dryer so i do have a heat gun i am using it on a low setting and i'm just taking my time because i don't want to blow the colors all over the place this was a very satisfying part for me personally when I was working on the project because you started slowly seeing those colors come into each other and morph together and I thought it was really beautiful to see that happen. Now you do want to go very slowly. Something that I did differently here um, than most of these crayon melting things that you see is that a lot of people tape them to the top of the canvas I wanted to do something a little bit different so instead of taping them all to the top of the canvas and going that route uh, I decided to lay them in this circular pattern and try and have them going from the center going outwards instead so here you can just see how how slowly I am working this in and carefully I'm doing this so that I don't just blow the color all over the place. You do have to go in this very slowly and very carefully. You cannot rush it um, and expect this to happen right away. This took me at least 45 minutes to an hour just to do the melting process. And I started with the center here because I didn't tape them down and I knew that I would have to tilt the canvas afterwards. So starting with the center, it melted them to the canvas. So I'm able to tilt the canvas and start heating them and tilting the canvas in the direction that I want each particular color to go. And unfortunately my camera did stop recording there for a second and I didn't get the peeling of the tape. Unfortunately, it didn't hold as well as I would have hoped. So the tape did allow some of the wax to get underneath it. But here are the final results. And that's it. We did it. This is my first wax melting. Unfortunately, the electrical tape didn't work quite the way that I wanted it to. It did bleed underneath. But I gotta say, I like it. It gives it a very natural look very earthy feel and as you can see I tried to follow different elements of the pentagram so while it didn't work out exactly the way I wanted to I think it was a happy accident it worked out very well I hope you all liked it sitting at home please like subscribe and comment as to what you want to see next and to find out what we can make together next time thank you and have a